to Sugar Coated. I'm your host, Adrian Garland, the CEO and founder of She Leads Media. For far too long, women have been conditioned to sugarcoat their words, their actions, and the way they show up in the world, and to conform to certain cultural norms and ideals. This is inherently designed to keep those who are outside of the norm from gaining power, prestige, wealth, and influence preventing more women from being recognized and respected as the powerful leaders that we truly are. Join me each week as we dive into raw conversations with remarkable, uncompromising, and inspirational women that will encourage you to strip away your sugar coating and move boldly in the direction of your magnificent dreams. everybody. Welcome to Sugar Coated. My name is Adrienne Garland, and I am incredibly excited today to introduce my guests to you. We have Vicky and Sharice Posh. They are the co-founders of a size-inclusive clothing company from San Diego called Dapper Boy. Welcome to Sugar Coated, Vicky and Sharice. Thank you. Woo-hoo! Thank you. We are so stoked to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, I am so excited to speak to you. And just before we were getting started, we were talking about mutual connections that we have. So I just love it that we are all kind of in community together because the women that I'm meeting, everybody is just energized and we are are doing incredible things. So I would love to hear from the both of you. I know that you started the company out of a problem that you were experiencing. So can you tell us a little bit about that and how you started Dapper Boy? Yeah, sure. So Vicky here speaking. It really started selfishly with my own problem back in 2015. And actually, it was before that. In 2010, specifically, is when I chopped off my hair and decided to come out and you know, trying to find my authentic self. And I always wanted to shop in the men's department, but was just so scared about what the world was going to think about me shopping in there until I had a, a, a tough chat with one of my friends who was very open with me, knew kind of what I wanted to do and gave me almost that permission mm. to do so. And so I remember shopping and it was actually specifically at Old Navy <laughs> for the first time in the men's department. Super scary, but I was so excited at the same time because when I tried on my very first pair of jeans, men's jeans, it's exactly the feeling, you know, of, of what I wanted, needed it to be. You know, that was myself. And I loved, uh, you know, the aesthetic from the men's department. I hated shopping before this. You know, it's crazy that I have this, we have this fashion brand, because if you would ask my friends from back home in upstate New York, um, if I would have ever gotten into fashion, never the case. <laughs> I was I hated shopping. I felt frumpy. I felt unseen. And it was like disastrous. But once I started shopping in the men's department, it was like game on. I was like fashionista in the men's department. (laughs) So yeah, let me fast forward kind of through that. Uh, Sharice and I met in 2012, actually. You know, she loves fashion. And I just remember, you know, none, none of the men's clothes actually fit my body properly. And I never even thought of it that way. It was just like, that's what it was. <laughs> and I knew yeah. that I could never fit into men's clothing properly, but I still like the style and I didn't care, didn't think too much into that. But she saw a problem, you know, right away. And she was trying to find clothes for me that never still fit my body and realized this is so much bigger, you know, than me personally. So yeah, that's kind of how Dapper Boy, you know, came to be. I love it. I think that's so awesome. You know, I have to tell you that I always found men's clothes to also just there's something about them I don't know whether it's the the quality you know maybe they take a little bit longer to produce or something but I always found that they were sort of nicer and yeah they don't fit properly I always too gravitated toward men's clothing and it, and it's funny being hetero that's what you say I'm I'm like such an idiot but no Like I actually, it's funny because I would have absolutely no problem just walking into a men's section and trying something on myself. So I think it's very interesting what we also bring to our experience, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and so I, you know, I'm sorry that you felt that you couldn't do what you wanted to do and just be comfortable with that. But I am glad that that prompted 
you to start this company and to solve this problem because you are not the only one that has this particular problem. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's still happening today because I have one of my very best friends, her daughter is always looking for clothes that sort of represent who she is. And, you know, some of the stuff that's out there, it does not. So she shops in like young boys departments and some of the stuff is just not exactly what she wants. So I cannot wait to tell her about Dapper Boy. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. And I think it's like so cool that now people and even kids are finding out about our brand because like, can you imagine Vicky was in her thirties and she had to go through that struggle. Like even as a kid, she was wearing ties and she felt so confident and she loved it. Like she was seen. And so it was so important for me to, because Vicky had, we really started going after this on our honeymoon. It was like so interesting. She had this conversation with me, like, I want to start this brand. And I've always been very um, supportive behind it. But what I was going to say is it's so beautiful to see parents supporting their children in their fashion expression because it's how they feel on the inside and expressing it on the outside. And so, you know, if we can even help anybody through their journey, even at a younger age, like, can you imagine what type of like mental health we're helping and like people really embracing who they are? Like, this is such, it's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I I totally agree. And it's funny. It's like there's the layer of feeling comfortable in your skin. And then there's the layer of what is the outward expression of that. Mm -hmm. And if you literally cannot find stuff or you have to go through, you know, alterations and and all this other like craziness in order to find something that you feel comfortable in, how can you feel comfortable? If, if you're right, not wearing right. something that makes you feel comfortable. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. This is great. I have a couple of questions. Vicki, where did you grow up in upstate New York? So Saratoga ah. uh, County. So uh, 20 minutes north of Albany. It, actually, it's called Boston Lake. It's a oh, little, a little yep. town in Saratoga. Woo-hoo! Boston Spa, Boston. Uh, So I grew up in Westchester County and attended SUNY Albany. And my, yep. And my roommate was from Saratoga Springs. So so beautiful. Saratoga Springs is such a beautiful town. I just absolutely love it up there. Yeah, I went to SUNY Plattsburgh, actually. You did? (laughs) Oh my gosh. So (laughs) many, my whole high school went to SUNY Plattsburgh. (laughs) I think you're nice. you're a little younger than I am, so you probably don't know some of the people, but many, many, many people from my high school at, went to SUNY Plattsburgh. Yeah. And I have visited there many a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a, a fun uh, party school. For definitely sure. a fun party. <laughs> I'm, I'm freezing. That. Yeah. I'm freezing. And, Sharice, and did, freezing. Oh, yeah. Did, Sharice, did you grow up in on the West Coast? Yep. Yeah. So we immigrated here from the Philippines when I was one. So specifically, I tell Vicky all the time, I'm like diehard Chula Vista. So that's like, what are we like five miles from the border? So a very nice suburban area or just like some down home suburban ladies now of preschoolers. (laughs) (laughs) That's so adorable. Oh my gosh. So before, before you got into being, you know, fashionistas, what did you do before then? Were you in corporate? What was your story before you started the company? Yeah. So I was actually in casino marketing um, for a long time. So Hmm. yeah, I went to school at Plattsburgh for mass media communications. When I, came out to San Diego and really it was because I was too scared to go to New York City as <laughs> upstaters. I don't know. We were like yes. freaked out by it. So I felt like that was my option, right? The city or stay in upstate New York. And I really wanted to go out somewhere else. And I have family in San Diego, luckily. So I thought it was just going to be a little summer thing, but I ended up staying here forever now since 2005. Yeah. So I was looking for anything in marketing and mm-hmm. I have a definitely very like marketing brain and I worked my way up in the casino to management and then ended up at another casino uh, as like a director of marketing. Oh, wow. Uh, so, yeah. That, yeah. So definitely a, a big, heavy marketing background. And then after that, I actually did consulting on my own with uh, 
a lot of other casinos as like an extension of their marketing team. Wow. Right. So so you sort of ventured into the world of entrepreneurship, first consulting. And and then is it sort of while you were doing consulting, you said, hey, if I can if I can do this, then I can start another yep. type of company. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly. It kind of gave me that flexibility, actually, to start this company. That's so exactly. wonderful. <laughs> and And so no more casino marketing. No, no more casino marketing. <laughs> it was fun. You know, I was that cheesy one a lot of the times on the microphone, getting the crowd all pumped up. <laughs> yeah, I was that person too. Doing the sprinkler <laughs> dance and everything. Yeah, yeah, the works. Love and how about, how about you, Sharice? What was your background? Yeah, so I'm heavy in sales. So we Ooh. harmonize very well. So I work for every major um, cell phone company. Oh. So that was fun. As a matter of fact, my very first job was at Carl's Jr. I was 16 and I had the top cheesecake add-on sales. Like I was just born to do sales. (laughs) Um, And most recently before Dapper Boy, I was an admissions manager at a for-profit college. So I had an admissions team of about 20 admissions counselors and we would help adult learners you know, that had been out of school, always wanted to finish their college degree and kind of go back into that. So I did that for a long time. And so many things that I've learned, I've been able to apply in our business. So it's been so cool to work together. Um, Also, Vicky and I started entrepreneurially together as well. So we, I had this like really fun idea of starting this company and it's called Hey Girl Hey never came into fruition but I had this idea for this business and my then girlfriend had told me about Vicky and so we started talking and you know it was so cool to like be so passionate about business with her because we could see the vision together to make a long story short my girlfriend then and i did not work out vicky and i continued to work together and turns out we're soulmates <laughs> so, and then we started our business yeah it's like so interesting because we've really partnered with everything um from our family our home and our business together mm. That's so beautiful. And, you know, it's funny, I actually teach entrepreneurship at uh, NYU and also um, Rice University. But I, I always talk about bringing your life together. You know, you these days, I don't think you can have a separate sort of professional life and a personal life. You really need to incorporate both of those things into your vivid vision, right? And the fact that you were able to, in all areas, really, you know, come together and and form this incredible partnership that cuts across mm-hmm. so many different aspects is, it's so inspirational. So uh, I Thank hope you. that everybody listening can also see or hear that it's possible, right? Because sometimes we don't think that we can literally be in business with our partners, that we can spend so much time together and not sort of butt heads and things like that. So you're a perfect example of how it can really work. Um, and so that inspires me as well. Yeah. So, oh my goodness. Let's, one of the things that I actually wanted to talk about a little bit, because listen, this is called sugar coated, right? So it's it's definitely, you know, real talk. I'm sure that there that every day is not, you know, sunshine and rainbows and unicorns, right? So what are some of the challenges that you are facing as you are sort of growing and expanding your business? Yeah, I think we definitely have gone through it over the last year and it was fundraising. And I'd mm-hmm. say, you know, just a piece of advice <laughs> is definitely like when you're starting a business, having these conversations early and often with people that can help you. Because I had thought, you know, because, and and just to backtrack a little bit. So Sharice, she's been the backbone of this company. She was full-time work to help support us because I went full-time with Dapper Boy. So 
we moved to a really, you know, small one bedroom shack just to make this dream a reality here. And so oh. I was running the entire company for a long time, but she was supporting it and, and working at nights and weekends along with her full time job to just support us while we're doing this thing, yeah. <laughs> which is wild. So I felt like, you know, starting this company, I had to figure it all out by myself. Mm. And I also thought I had to hit a million dollars in sales before I even, you know, could qualify for a conversation with an investor. Mm. And that's not the case, you know, and I've learned that is a lot of hard lessons, but, but also valuable lessons along the way here, you know, during this entrepreneurial journey. And it started, you know, 2015. So we're eight years in and I feel like I'm just starting to really be confident in front of investors like over the mm. last year, <laughs> which is yeah. pretty wild, yeah. you know? So it's, um, and, and knowing the lingo and who to talk to and really like being confident in yourself that yeah. you are a value, mm. like you are the value, you know? And of course these investors are extremely valuable, but it's being aligned and, and having that alignment with investors that truly believe in you and your mission. Yeah. So I think that's been the, the most challenging part is kind of letting go a little bit, trusting yourself <laughs> and building a community behind you. But but as for like particular situation, we went through it over the last year. You know, the, how we were able to start our business really was bootstrapping. We were launching products at in pre, as a pre-orders, you know, pre-order campaigns, kind of like a Kickstarter model, how we started our brand when we first started. And we yeah. brought that to our own site. So we were launching products you know, for a three week time frame at discounted rates so that people would, you know, create that sense of urgency to get in on the product so that we could place a purchase order. And then the product would wait, you know, six to 12 weeks before it would get here. And customers were on board, which was mm. amazing because that just proved our product is needed. <laughs> you know, wow. they didn't have anywhere for a product like ours. But what happened to us, so we hit the million dollars in 2020. And that's just me and Sharice and two part time employees. That, and then 2021. Awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. 2021, 1.2. And I was thinking, you know what? We got this. But then the COVID delays started really hitting hard. And this was the story here. So in 2020, this is really so recent. Yeah. We couldn't launch any more pre order campaigns because we were backed up in campaigns. Customers waiting for products and they're like, hey, I'm five campaigns in here. What's going on, guys? And we were like, it's delays, but then we didn't feel right launching more products. <laughs> this is yeah. not sugarcoating anything yet. You know? yeah. <laughs> so we decided to stop launching products and we didn't have, except for January of 2022, no product launches again. And we still haven't launched a brand new product since. No way. And so imagine being a company that was relying on product launches at in 2021, it was on a weekly basis to nothing. Mm-hmm. So we had to figure out, we got rid of any outside help, anything. And we were down to me and Sharice, and again, the two part time at a very minimal level here, to the point where we had to sell our home because that's how much we believe in this mission here, just to be able to keep our house afloat, our family taken care of, and the business just to still go on whatever we could with the limited inventory we had left. That was real, and that was yeah. a struggle. But again, it was like the mission of our brand is so much bigger than me, than us, than this conversation, you know. And so that's what we you know, kept in mind throughout this whole thing is like the mothers that contacted us with their, you know, kids that were suicidal, but like saw our brand and started smiling again. Like this mission, you know, to have these people feel like they belong in society is way bigger than us. So it's like, it didn't matter. You know, we knew that if we had plan A in our brains all the way, never thinking about plan B, that we will succeed. And you know, we're here smiling today. And yeah, it was a house that we loved, (laughs) but we're in a beautiful rental right now. And we're seeing this mission through and we're in some very exciting times. So that was our crazy story. (laughs) Wow. And yeah, I mean, that is just incredible dedication to the mission. And I thank you so much for being so real because I think that that is the reality for Mm -hmm. so many entrepreneurs. I mean, I have definitely heard stories of people sort of losing everything, right? But not really, not really losing everything. Maybe the things, maybe you're losing the things, but you're not losing everything. And the positive side of that, the silver lining is story after story that you hear, that is 
one of the inputs of success, right? Mm -hmm. Right. The the quote unquote, I'm so happy that you didn't use the word and I probably won't even, I'm not even going to say it, but like the, the setback, we'll say the setback, right? Right. Is, it's almost really like a set up for what's coming next. And, And sometimes we have to, like a snake, like shed that skin so that we can move into something bigger and and better. And if we have that positive outlook that that there is something better coming, then I truly believe that something better will come. Mm -hmm. And so, so many times younger people or people even that are like older that have started businesses on their Mm -hmm. own, you know, they're so afraid of something going wrong. And right. it's almost like mm-hmm. we need to embrace that thing going wrong because right. that's the criteria for success. Right. Yeah, I will say from my own background that the measure of success, I mean, being Filipino, it's like you're kind of expected to probably go into healthcare because it pays well and there's security. And it's all about building up that 401k. And so the idea of starting a business and risk. And then even more so, you know, we're in business (laughs) since 2015. And now we've come to a crossroads where we have to sell our house is scary for a lot of people. And so I think, you know, a lot of people would have said plan B or like now's the time to throw in the towel. And we certainly have heard that even from some very successful business people However, it was, I have to share the story because it just like every time I talk about it, it's just so incredible. We have this customer named Atlas and they actually reached out to me a couple of days ago and they said, hey, I want to let you know, two days ago was my Dapper Boy anniversary. And what they meant by that was that was their very first order that they placed with us. So to give some context on Atlas, Atlas was found Dapper Boy after their 13th suicide attempt, was hospitalized. And, you know, I think that 2020 was such a reflective point for so many people. It like forced us to stay home and evaluate ourselves. And so for Atlas, this moment was, I don't feel like the person that I'm in, uh, I don't feel authentic in my skin. I, 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 I'm you know, and so kind of came through that uh, journey of realizing that they are transgender. And so through that journey, like one of the first things that you do, like literally went home, first thing they did was Google gender neutral clothing and Dapper Mm -hmm. Boy just so happened to be the first hit. Checked out Dapper Boy. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, and we hadn't even invested in SEO. We were, were, we were still small. And Wow, like found Dapper Boy finally gets their clothes and like the it's it's called gender euphoria, trans joy, like finding something that expresses how they feel on the inside, on the outside. And that moment was so huge for them. And so like this person, um, Atlas is so incredible, has turned into a friend, but like has purchased every single one of our items <laughs> because awesome. it just it is so yeah. awesome like they're they're like has transitioned all of their their entire closet into dapper boy clothes because like the way that they feel in our clothing is so significant in their life and so when we talk about selling our home and us having kids like and also my background like it was it was me that was kind of holding back on selling the house that was a we were getting to that point. It wasn't until it got to a head and we were like, oh my gosh, we have a decision to make, but also we have kids. Like, what are we going to do? And so when we hear all these stories, it's like, how can we, how can we not? Yeah. Right. I mean, we had that, that like 30,000 customers. We hit those sales yeah. for a reason. You know, it was like, we were confident in our product and in our customers. Oh, yeah. So it's like, now we had to like really look within ourselves and you're right when you're talking about shedding that skin. That's exactly what it was. It forces you yeah. these like dire situations to dig real deep mm. and and make these kind of decisions oh, yeah. that do propel you, mm. you know, to the next level. And and it also created a lot of urgency to start connecting. And that was where things changed for us. Mm. Totally. 
Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that story. Of course, I'm like sitting here holding back tears because I just, I'm, <laughs> yeah. s- I, every, I hate to hear when I'm going to cry. <laughs> I hate to hear when, oh my God, I'm sorry, <laughs> no, it's I hate right. to hear yeah. Yeah. when people don't, um, you know, when they, when they hate themselves so much or, you know, yep. it's awful. <laughs> And it, it yeah. breaks my heart. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, it does. Right. It's awful. And, you know, some people might think, like, oh, clothes, right? But, like you've both said, it's so much, it's so much more than that. And there's not a lot of people that would make a decision to keep going like this. So I, I commend you for doing that. And I, I, I'm positive that amazing things are are going to come your way because of that dedication to humanity and what you're doing for people. So I can, you know, I can see why the person that we know in common is Kelly, who has been a guest on this show. Mm -hmm. Um, In fact, her episode is coming out on Friday. But I can see why Kelly uh, has decided to, uh, you know, partner up with you. And I would love to, to sort of know, you know, here you are at this crossroads that you're talking about, and you've taken all of these steps to kind of, you know, almost like get lean so you can focus on growing the business. What what comes next? Like, where where are you? And and is it investors and, and getting money in? Where are you with the whole inventory and delivering on orders? Where is all of that? Yeah. So right after, you know, we sold the house, we were able to breathe a little bit. It was a, we, after we sold it, it was like the best feeling actually of relief and freedom. And then we were introduced, it was, it was a woman named Catherine Gray, who I connected with a long time ago. I took her e-course. She would put out an e-course about six ways to fund your business. Happened to reach out because I complimented her and we caught up about what's going on with Dapper Boy. And that was like the ultimate connection because she started connecting with all these people that were the right people. I feel like for years I was talking to the wrong investors just to talk to an investor, anyone who can write a check and realize that wasn't the case here. So she introduced us to Kelly. And it was funny because after all these pitches (laughs) through these last two years, that was the easiest one. She had been following Dapper Boy for years and she was like, this is a no brainer, (laughs) you know, after a couple, like, one conversation, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So she came through with an investment, which also landed us a manufacturing partnership at the same time with her investment that was contingent on her investment that ended up falling through down the line. But like for, in that moment, it was it was awesome. So we were able to start producing those mm-hmm. back orders again. And um, <laughs> as of yesterday, literally yesterday, we got the last of them that are finally going out. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, today. Today. <laughs> wow. So like it's it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, we've had productions come in these last two months here, but customers have regained faith in us and that we didn't lose them either. They we were transparent throughout everything here, mm. what's going on. And that's key. <laughs> so key is to stay in communication with them. We're not a scam. This is what's going on. We are determined and dedicated. Yeah. Um, yeah. To finally getting these so orders exciting. up. Too. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. That is just so exciting. And now you can actually start doing the drops, right? Doing yes. the exciting job. That's yep. awesome. That is so good. Yep. And you mentioned a little bit about there's a lot of exciting things going on. You know, I just kind of saw real quick on your Instagram that you were on Shark Tank, which is yes. crazy. <laughs> it is crazy wild and like the most exciting thing and craziest part of our lives right now we we did film back in september and um we weren't sure if we were going to air or not and um we just found out what less than two weeks ago that get get ready (laughs) we're airing Mm -hmm. on friday so april 14th and yeah, wow. we're just excited for that. We've been that's what we're we're, you know, able to talk about with everybody. We've been promoting promoting like crazy on social media that watch us, you know. Yeah. I'm tuning no in. No matter what the outcome is, we're we're excited because this is what matters. I think what I what I miss here is it's so important for a brand like ours to go mainstream. Yeah. And here is why. <laughs> 
I don't want to put myself in a box. And I know a lot of, you know, investors, maybe the pushback I was getting, it's because of my face, my haircut, that they automatically assume that you are a lesbian brand, (laughs) you know, for lesbians. And that is not the case at all. And it's so important to be seen mainstream. And I know that gender neutral clothing is a thing these days, but they haven't gotten it right, even mainstream, because it's not about oversized sweatshirts or pants. And those are great. I love them. But it's about fit and feeling confidence in yourself. So again, this brand has gone above and beyond me. We have cis straight males, you know, that have the same exact problem with maybe, you know, larger, or, you know, yeah. big booties or, you know, yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or cis curves. women that don't love yeah. shopping in the women's department because it's all very the same. So like, yeah, the best way I've been able to like get through to mainstream folks or investors is like painting this picture. And it's like questioning society and like the, historic the history of like what we've just become to become accustomed to it's walking to the department store and we all have two options you have the men's section or women's section these are all embedded with these societal rules and norms based on your gender yeah. and so it's time to like break down this like way of thinking and and that we believe at dapper boy that it should be based on your body type your style preference your size and i think size inclusivity in, in this is huge too yeah. I happen to also be a plus size person, not only that likes to shop in the men's department, but I'm at the top of the size in the men's department. And those clothes still don't fit me properly. And I go to a plus size men's section and I'm the smallest size and those clothes are swimming on, me. you know, like yeah. I'm swimming in them. Yeah. So it's like, I really don't fit in. And that's still, we did a test just recently to a mainstream store. It's still the case today. So it's just mm-hmm. so important that a brand like ours to go on this huge show, no matter the outcome, Uh, like Shark Tank to be seen in this way is huge. And it's huge, not only for our own community, but for other brands like ours that Mm -hmm. are trying, like if one of us is successful here, all of us are. This is huge. So we are just so excited. I love using Shark Tank as a PR strategy. It's awesome. (laughs) Right, (laughs) right. Yeah. So yeah, and and, and our, our customers are just stoked. (laughs) <laughs> so they're all, all on board yeah. here too. And we're we're obviously nervous about like what is this gonna look like? <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. How are they gonna edit this thing? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter actually. Yeah. From a personal side, craziest freaking time of our lives. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> we're deciding to at this moment we're selling our house literally as we're filming and preparing, which by the way, like the it's a very long yep. process and you know, whatever, like the whole Shark Tank thing, but we're selling our house, which is one of the most stressful things in your life because this is when interest rates were crazy and we did not know if we were going to get a bite. And literally our only chance to be able to make our first rental payment was whether we closed on that weekend of our very first open house. It was so bananas. And then we're moving. So we're doing that and the house has to be pristine to be able to show And then we're quickly packing so that we can move into our rental. And then we're also filming for Shark Tank, like three of the most incredibly (laughs) stressful things in our life. Yes, it was insane. Insane. Where is Shark Tank uh, filmed? Uh, ABC Studios Studios in in Burbank. Oh, yeah. Sony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So you weren't you weren't too far away. Right. Right. Yeah. Like two two and a half, three hours. Yeah. Yeah. That's far enough. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, that is just a crazy, insane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) We're like, don't you dare even cough. We can't, none of us can get sick during this time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness. What was it? What was it like? I know, and I don't want to talk about the outcome at all, but what was it like actually getting up. I mean, you had had the experience of talking to investors, but being on a show like that with the the intimidating personalities um, and some of the aggression too, right? Like, what was that like, you know, standing there and, and doing your thing in front of these celebrities, really? Yeah. And that's a different level. Like, we were just, um, it's just crazy because you're like excited. You're so excited too, because it's just like a different reality because you want to put out there, you know, that you're on TV. So you want to be vulnerable, you know, and, and put out there what you're willing to like as a founder, if you have this like first impression here and you know that investors 
you know, what they're obviously it's numbers, but it's really like them believing in a founder. Like, what are you willing to like do as a founder? So you feel like you have to, you know, tell everything in this short amount of time, you know? Yeah. And so it's a very vulnerable thing, but it's not something you'd normally do, in front, you know, in a first meeting with an investor. Ever. <laughs> so it's like so strange. And there's celebrities and there's cameras, you know, and so you're just like, <laughs> wild, wild. So I have to know, like, did did you feel like treated well? Were you excited, you know, after the, the fact? Or I, I'm just curious about like what it felt like after they sort of gave you their feedback. <sighs> I think I think it felt it was vul- like vulnerable, raw. Vulnerable. Raw, yeah. Actually. Yeah. 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 It was overall like it it was yeah, we didn't really have a moment to touch base. And immediately you're giving your reaction on yeah. camera. And so it feels unnatural and you're yeah. still processing everything. And again, it was like very high emotions. Yeah. And so, and everything was caught, you know, on camera to have a very, you know, real reaction. And I understand that, which is why I could never be a reality star. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like, um, we're all used to filtering our best selves online. So it it was very difficult to go through. Yeah. And I think we're still processing it. And it's interesting because it's been since September and we went through this whole thing of like, we were recording and watching Shark Tank up until like, going on the show because we were like ourselves doing some research and really understanding and getting a grasp of everything, but it's nothing like what you see on TV. And then afterwards, I think we went through a process of not being able to watch it at all. (laughs) Yeah. And now we're like thrown back into it and we're like, okay. And um, I think that we have embraced it because like you were just saying, it's like such a great opportunity to be on mainstream. And that's been our whole thing. Like we have, like over 40,000 followers on Instagram. And that's monumental and that's huge, but even more people need to know about us. And yeah. so to have that main stage is, is also really wonderful. I will say from my own perspective, instinctually, I feel like first I'm a mom and a wife. So for myself going through all those things, I was like, check, do we, you know, is the house perfect? check like do we have enough boxes to move are my kids okay and i didn't realize that we were on shark tank until we were in front of those doors are very <laughs> real and like i remember <laughs> like suppressing a panic attack i looked at vicky and she was in this very calm state i think this is why we're <laughs> such a good yin and yang sometimes i like looked at her and i was like oh my god we're here and i don't know why this like, blood of like realization hit me it was like the weirdest thing and like we're walking and it is a very long walkway and I was like oh my oh, god, god. <laughs> you know to be able to and and also know that like as we're running this business Vicky has been fundraising for over a year before we had gotten to this point and so fundraising is a full-time job yeah. and she had to take a back seat from the business so I'm running you know, I'm doing all the marketing. Once we got our girls like full time in preschool, I was able to take more of a full time role in Dapper Boy. So I'm doing our emails, I'm doing our social media, I'm doing like our operations, I'm doing all the things that Vicky was doing. Mm. So she could mostly focus on fundraising. So she had done all these pitches. So this was my first experience pitching <laughs> on. <laughs> Short yeah, that's I'm like crazy. It's crazy. It's <laughs> oh my crazy. God. Like what a crazy experience. So I'm standing up there and I'm like, and if you've ever watched the show, it's like almost like a monkey dance in the first yeah. two minutes. You're like, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. here's our brand. What do you think? And then it's like, yeah. bam, what are your numbers? You're like, <laughs> oh my God, I've never done this before. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Just wow. what a wild experience. <laughs> wow. I, and, you know, I've never actually had anybody on the podcast that has been on Shark Tank. So I really appreciate you kind of pulling back the curtain and telling everybody what that's like, too. I do really admire the fact that you, you know, no matter what the outcome is, that you're looking at the positive side of it. Like, hey, this is on national television. A lot of people watch Shark Tank and they're going to get to know you no matter what. So that is such an incredible thing. 
So how can, I mean, I wish that my audience on Sugar Coated was as big as Shark Tank's, but how can I help you to spread the word? How can people that are listening into the Sugar Coated podcast get in touch with you, follow you, buy out all of your inventory? <laughs> yeah, awesome. So yeah, come to our website. So www.dapperboy.com and Dapper Boy is B-O-I. Our Instagram is at Dapper Boy. And I recently started Dapper Boy Vicky to give a little bit more like behind the scenes Ooh. and just, you know, my own kind of entrepreneur journey behind this business. I love it. Um, so that's been interesting we have too. TikTok. We have TikTok Dapper yep. Boy Squad. And then we just launched our app. Woo! You can find us yes. on Apple and uh, and Google Play Store. So oh just look up Dapper Boy. And there we are. Oh, uh, thank, thank you. This has been such a fun and also, you know, listen, I shed a tear. So also <laughs> an emotional yeah. episode. And I just really appreciate the both of you so much. Thank you for taking out your time and speaking to me today and sharing your story with the Sugar Coated audience. Thank you so much, Vicky and Sharice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.